Hi, in this video I have three docks which I'm going to briefly show you. This was the older Dell ePort Plus 2 port replicator or I like to call it a dock because you would actually dock your laptop into this bay over here and when you were done you would eject it using that button over there. Then they came out to this one which is the WD-15 and then this one is the WD-19. I've used all three of these. Now, if you're somebody who is familiar with this, you will see that the newer docks don't have this big adapter here where you would actually dock your laptop. The newer laptops do not have that connector at the bottom of their laptops. So here I have an older dull latitude and you can see it's got the space here for where you could dock and there are the openings for where the posts would align. So traditionally you would dock it like this and because you would dock it like this, it would cover the back of the laptop and that would mean it would cover a lot of the ports. And that's one of the reasons why this was so big and having so many more ports. So if you're having a look at this, you'd see you'd have quite an extensive display adapter configuration. Look, you'd have DisplayPort, DisplayPort, DVI, DVI, VGA, even the old serial port. There you would plug it in for your power, USB connectivity, and there on the side. Now, if you're migrating from this, you're probably going to be looking at a newer type Dell dock. This one has already been in the market for some time. And then we've got the WD-19. Just having a look at these two. The first thing you'll notice is that it charges using a power delivery USB-C. So having a look at this big 17-inch laptop. This is a Dell Precision 7740. It has the usual DC connecting plug over there, but also USB-C power delivery. So in the case of this laptop, it's actually got two USB ports for the power delivery, which means that the dock also provides the laptop with power. Now on most laptops, you'll only have the one USB-C port, which will also provide you with the power to the laptop. On more powerful laptops, you will have a dual power to the laptop. So comparing the WD-15 and the WD-19, you can see they both have a power button, although the 15 does not have an LED. So you cannot see if the laptop is on or off, while the 19 does, but having used this for over a year, this LED inside here is so dim that it is pretty much useless in my opinion. So the only way that I was able to see if the laptop was on or off was to go and cup it here in order to see if the LED was on or off. That's how dim it is. But nevertheless, you can power up your laptop from both of these units. Right, having a look at the connectivity, on the side you have the headphone jack, 3.5 millimeter there or there. Then on the WD-15, you've got your two USB 3s here, one with power share, this is USB 3.0. Then if I flip it round, you've got another USB 3.0 and then two USB 2. So actually you've got four USB connections on the WD-15. Now on the up, now on the 19, here we've got the USB 3.1 with PowerShare and then two more USB 3.1 on this side. So altogether three 3.1 USBs and then you've got two USB-C. One there, one there. Now this one actually is a dual personality USB-C, which means that you can also use this as a graphics driver for DisplayPort. So you can see there's a little D there, signifying DisplayPort connectivity via the USB-C. So say for example you had a USB-C to DisplayPort adapter, it would work. So that means you could have a DisplayPort, a DisplayPort and another DisplayPort over here using this dual personality USB-C port. Now in the WD-15, there is no USB-C port on the unit. Looking at the WD-15, you've got HDMI, DisplayPort, and VGA. The maximum bandwidth of the DisplayPort is 10.8 gigabits. And if you're using any one of these just for a single display, you can use VGA at 1920 by 1200 with 60 hertz. Or you can use HDMI or this mini display port at 4K at 30 Hertz. Now you can connect two monitors, but you are limited to two full HD monitors running at 60 Hertz. If you connect a third monitor, you're going to have to run it at 1280 by 1024. Now the WD-19 is a considerable upgrade on the graphic capabilities. For example, you've got DisplayPort here, DisplayPort here, HDMI and DisplayPort over here or USB-C. However, these two over here, 
the HDMI and the USB-C is actually a single port. What I mean by that is if you use the HDMI, you're effectively blanking the graphic capability of this display port. So you're either using that or you're using that. So ultimately you can only connect three monitors to this unit. Even though there are four ports, four monitors, three will work concurrently. Now here are the graphic specifications, but the Dell laptops are separated into HBR2 and HBR3, high bitrate 2 and high bitrate 3 laptops or PCs. So you'll need to determine what your laptop or PC operates at. Now a lot of them run at HBR2, which means you can have three times full HD monitors at 60 Hertz or only one 4K at 60 Hertz across any one of those ports. Now, if you have a high spec laptop, you can have two by 4K at 60 Hertz. So you actually got double the bandwidth available and you can have an 8K monitor at 30 Hertz. The maximum resolution there you can see 5120 by 2880 at 60 Hertz. Something they do not mention here is the color bit depth. And I can tell you from experience that this two times 4K at 60 Hertz is only at eight bit. So if you want to run your monitors at 10 bit, you are gonna to have to scale back that refresh rate. Now, both units have a gigabit ethernet and they both have the dual display, the link and the connectivity LEDs over there. They both have the DC jack to power them up. In terms of compatibility with power supplies, I'll now show you the different power supplies which can work with these docks. Now over here, I've got three different size power supplies. This is the smaller 65 watt, then I've got the 90 and then the 240 watt. Now you can actually use all three of these to power the dock because the dock does not use a lot of power and all these power supplies actually use the same DC jack. But now I want to be clear here, powering the dock is not the same as powering the dock and charging the laptop. So say for example, you're only using the dock just for expandability. You're not using it to charge the laptop. Well then any of the power supplies will actually work. So you could use the 65 watt, you could use the big 240 or even the 90 watt and both of these docks will work fine. But the minute you want to use the dock as a power delivery device, meaning a charging source for your laptop, now you've got to specify firstly whether the dock is compatible with your laptop and then whether you have the correct size power supply. So say for example, I take this WD-15. This is not compatible with the higher end Dell laptops and what happens is, yes, you can use the dock for port expandability, but you cannot use it to charge the laptop because it just does not deliver enough power. Even if you plug in the 240 watt power supply into the WD-15 dock, it's still not gonna work. Say for example, the Dell Precision 7740 range laptop. The laptop actually comes up with an error and it says, please use specified power cable and plug directly into the laptop. Now, if you use this one, and this one can handle a much higher power delivery, but then you use the small power supply, it's still not going to charge the laptop that requires a high current draw. This is why you need to look at the compatibility sheet on Dell's website, telling you which dock is compatible with which laptop. In terms of port expandability and not charging it, so you're just using it to get access to additional ports, well then you could use this with most laptops because all you need is a little bit of power to power the dock because your laptop will be powered from its native power supply. If you are going to be using this for the Dell laptops that require a dual port power delivery, then you'll be able to get 210 watts out of this dock as long as you are using this power supply with it. If you separate these, you will no longer get that full 210 watts and it will scale down, but it will still charge your laptop. Even the laptops that require dual port, one port will work, but obviously both will give you that full power. Now they both do offer a locking system, although the WD-19 has both the Novel and the Kensington type. Right, to sum up, while well, having used these type of docks, one at my office, one at my home, I would come and dock my laptop. These were great and they were very reliable. Would I recommend this particular dock? Uh, actually, no. I found that there are too many limitations with the graphics here. 
For example, while I do have port expandability here, it's actually lower than the spec of the particular laptop that I use. So that means that if I use this dock, I'm actually downgrading my laptop's graphics specifications. And the only way I can get the full graphics capability of my Dell Precision is by using a third party MST hub, for example, something like this. And what happens is I plug this via the USB-C or you can get one that is DisplayPort. This is mini DisplayPort. And using these hubs, I can get the full graphics capability from my Dell Precision. In my case, the dock actually downgrades my graphics. So that is one of the reasons why I don't like it. Another thing is that three, you're only getting three USB ports here. I feel like they could have added at least two more USB ports here, even if it was USB 2. I find myself still using a USB port hub connected to the dock. Another problem is whenever I connect a USB 3 port hub to the dock, I always get an error when I boot my laptop. If I plug the USB port hub directly to my laptop, I don't get that error. So in closing, I really miss these older docks because I'm not limited by the bus speed of the dock. But if you're somebody who's not using the top of the range laptop, then yes, a dock like this is sufficient. And lastly, if you are using this type of dock, there are some bias settings that need to be changed in order to take advantage of the dock's full capability. I have some other videos going into more detail about the dock as well as how to assemble and disassemble and even repair the USB port on the dock if required. All right, thanks for watching and cheers.